What's up everybody? RJ here with Road to Liberty. I'm um, doing a video today. I've done something like this in the past with um, other clips, but the point of this video is to sort of throw some awareness towards the fact that underground media, so-called underground media, that is more of the popular variety. Like I'm not talking about my channel here, other small channels that you might you know, stumble across talking about the big name underground media sources, why they are failing us, quote, regular people, um, in the sense that they're heavily biased and they are catering to sort of an echo chamber type of audience where whether they're on the far left or on the far right, um, politically, these channels are out to promote their point of view on the world and there's not a lot, if any, reaching across the table and trying to understand where the other side's coming from or to find a common ground. And so hopefully this breakdown of a video I'm about to do here is going to sort of help do some of that. Um, I hope to show you guys more of an unbiased um, perspective on these issues that are addressed in this video, but also to show you generally why the underground media is not free from the same sort of issues that the, the mainstream media has plagued us with for so long, namely perpetuating a one-sided approach or one-sided viewpoint on, on a topic. So this video that I'm going to be breaking down is produced and put out by the Young Turks. And at the end of my critique, I'll go into a little bit more detail about um, this topic and how I feel in general um, about underground media and the Young Turks specifically. Over the weekend during the BET Awards, actor Jesse Williams used his ability to win an award as a way to speak out against some of the inequalities that the black community is facing. Now, during his speech, he mentioned some of the more noteworthy cases of police brutality against innocent, unarmed black individuals. Pardon the fact that I'm going to do some of this uh, presentation without my shirt on. It's hot as heck outside. I want to point out here that I do agree for the record that police are violent against um, innocent, unarmed individuals in many situations. But I also want to point out here um, how soon into the video the Young Turks go off the rails by suggesting that it's only black individuals who face this, this sort of violence from the police officers when in fact every person that lives in America alone plus I'm sure many other countries is subject to the violence of their police. Specifically Tamir Rice. Well Tommy Lauren who works for the Blaze uh, was very upset at this speech because if you ever have the audacity to talk about inequalities that the black community is facing well, then you should absolutely be criticized for it. And now for the first double standard. Apparently, Paula from the Young Turks believes that it's wrong to point out someone who is criticizing inequalities that the black community faces. But when Tommy from The Blaze does the exact same thing, but with regards to white uh, individuals, namely pointing out inequalities that they face, she should obviously be criticized. Now we're going to show you um, a part of her video response to Jesse Williams. It starts out with part of Jesse Williams' speech, in case you missed it, and then just take a listen to her ridiculous, ignorant, and unbearable commentary on it. Ridiculous, ignorant, and unbearable commentary. I know I'm isolating on the Young Turks here. I'll do another video down the road about how the Blaze and other platforms commit similar problems, but I've always had a problem with the Young Turks, and I find that they're extremely notorious for this sort of thing. When you tell your audience that the commentary you're about to display from your, from your uh, competition or from another news source is ridiculous, ignorant, and unbearable, it's, it's the epitome of shallowness. You, you, you're, you're pandering down to your own audience by telling them, hey, you guys are too dumb to decide for yourself how you feel about this commentary you're about to see, so let me pre-warn you and let you know that it's ridiculous, ignorant, and unbearable, because you obviously wouldn't be able to figure that out without our divine wisdom. It would have been young Tamir Rice's 14th birthday. 
So I don't want to hear any more about how far we've come when paid public servants can pull a drive-by on a 12-year-old playing alone in a park in broad daylight, killing him on television and then going home to make a sandwich. What's up, guys? I wanted to jump in real quick and just say that if at any point in this video it sounds like I am saying that black people aren't in any way disadvantaged in uh, Western culture or that the Tamir Rice example was not an example of police acting terribly and one of the greatest abuses of their own badge um, and their oath under the Constitution to protect and serve, then let it be known right here um, that I'm absolutely on the side of Jesse Williams in the isolation of what it is he was saying, um, you know, that we haven't come very far as a people if we think our job is done. Um, the fact that he's taking it to an area where it's, you know, it's a black-white thing, um, that's where I disagree. But I do think the Tamir Rice case is an example of terrible police brutality. And as a person with light skin, white skin, um, I don't in any way condone or think that it was acceptable what happened there. My frustration stems from the fact that whether Jesse Williams meant it or not, he seems to almost imply that this is a black versus white issue, that white America is okay with what happened and black America is, is the only ones who aren't. And I think this is a human issue. And I think that the more we let ourselves be divided into groups like this, I'm black, you're white, I'm white, you're black, whatever, the more of these events we're going to see and the more divisiveness we're going to see around it. And that's why the most of this video that I'm doing here, this commentary, is centered around what's wrong with the underground media and why they're leading us astray and why you and I should be making our own media and we should be talking to each other as human beings, not as people with different skin colors and different races, okay? Killing someone in broad daylight and then going home to make a sandwich? Are you kidding me, Jesse? Know what else is interesting, bud? Though the term unarmed black man may be literally accurate, it doesn't tell the whole story in most cases. In a number of cases, if the victim ended up being unarmed, it was certainly not for lack of trying. Grabbing an officer's gun or using other equipment to beat the police doesn't give you a free pass. Oh, but heaven forbid someone be critical of this movement. I am absolutely not biased on the side of um, the blaze and tell me Lauren, 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 whatever she here exposes her own just pretty terrible news reporting. Um, it's not news. I'm not pretending. No one's pretending that this stuff is news, but her attitude, her anger, her tone of voice just alienates anyone who can identify with her message, with her look, with her channel's you know, you're not you're not attracting new audience members in by by taking this approach, and I'm not even sure what she's saying here. It sounds like she's suggesting that she's defending what the police did in the Tamir Rice case because in most cases, um, black people who have the police called on them are armed and dangerous. I don't know that that's the case. I don't know to what extent that is the case, and I think that that's an issue where now, granted, this is something that the Young Turks had edited in here so maybe it's it's an excerpt that doesn't fully flesh out um tomi's full position from the blaze but i can't know this from the little limited amount of information i have here without stretching this out into being a much larger presentation but just to show i'm not biased against the young turks and in favor of the blaze because this is an example of when tomi from the blaze is just totally going the same way as the young turks but just in the opposite direction just totally flaming the opposition and standing on moral high ground and righteousness. If you have a critique for the resistance, for our resistance, then you better have an established record of critique of our oppression. If you have no interest, if you have no interest in equal rights for black people, then do not make suggestions to those who do. Look, you're not saying anything too revolutionary here. You're not bringing people together. You're not ending racism when you're speaking to an audience that's almost 100% in your camp and basically riling them up over something highly emotional and using it in a way to create even more divisiveness. You're basically saying to your audience, hey, what happened to Tamir Rice happened to everybody. And unless someone can 
understand our plight and repeat it back to us in the exact same terms that we are accustomed to hearing, we don't want to hear from them. So basically saying, hey, we're all in an echo chamber. Let's make our echo chamber, chamber even louder and let's alienate anybody that wants to have an outside opinion. So to Jesse Williams, dude, you're not part of the solution, bro. Two things. First of all, what does Jesse mean by the resistance? If you have a critique for the resistance, for our resistance. Like, I wasn't at the BET Awards. I'm not black. I'm a little worried. What is the resistance? Like, is there a thing called the resistance that's happening that I'm not aware of? Because it sounds a little intimidating. Two, pay attention to the fact that Jesse said equal rights for black people. If you have no interest in equal rights for black people, then do not make suggestions to those who do. I'm going to get into rights more in this video, and I'm going to get into rights versus outcomes in future content. That's a big thing I want to hone in on, guys. Sit down. Equal rights. Please tell me, Mr. Williams, what rights black people don't have. Also, white people, yet yeah, we do have a record of critique of your oppression. In fact, do you know how many of our ancestors fought in the Civil War to free your ancestors? Bloodiest war in the United States history was over what was right, and it was largely white people fighting it. In fact, it was white Southern Democrats who fought for, not against, slavery. Furthermore, the whole civil rights, civil, uh, civil war example is just a terrible thing to bring up here. Um, and Senk from, from the Young Tur Turks um, does a good job of actually defending himself and defending that position, that fact, um, after Tommy speaks, which you'll see in a second. Yeah, I mean, if black people are enslaved, how are they going to fight in the civil war? Granted, Tommy's point is, is well taken by me that there were people who did see that slavery was wrong, who were white even back then, and who did risk their lives, shed blood, and actually die to promote the end of slavery. Um, so that's, it's kind of like she had a point, but she brought it up with the wrong energy, the wrong attitude, sounded super angry, and was kind of blaming, like victim blaming, like, well, it was a good, it was actually a good point that, that it is an example of white people sticking their neck out for what's right for other ethnicities, other groups, namely black people, but the tone and the word choice just makes her sound like a tyrant and like she's asking for a, an award or a pat on the back for her ancestors doing the right thing. And meanwhile, stomping on what Jesse was saying about Tamir Rice, which really does Tamir Rice getting shot by a cop have a lot to do with slavery? I don't think so. I just very different things. Yes, they both affected black people, but they also both affected white people. So again, we're just allowing these independent, supposedly independent media sources to become more divisive. And I think we should be asking ourselves, are they really independent? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. It's, it's the white people that are helping all the black people. Without the white people, the black people would be totally fucked. Now, <laughs> it, here is a slightly, something slightly inconvenient. It, it was white people imprisoning and enslaving black people in the first place. Uh, they also died for the privilege of keeping black people as slaves. They thought it was so important that they be able to keep black people as property that they were willing to die for what they considered to be that right. Now, here's another inconvenient fact for Tommy. Um, she says well, it was mainly white people that fought in the Civil War to free the slaves. Yeah, that's because most of the pe black people were enslaved. It's, believe me. If you had given them weapons and said, hey, would you like to join the Northern Army? They probably would have, but they couldn't because they were in chains. And yes, some of those people who enslaved them were also your ancestors. Not that this is really central to the discussion at hand, but it is kind of a tangential issue. Um, I had to research it a little bit. I will provide links in the description to cover this, but there's at least a debate out there happening. I don't want to say it's you know fact one way or the other. Some historians are of the belief that at least part of the reason why the Civil War was fought had to do with tariffs that were imposed upon the South that basically made it so that they had to buy goods from the North, but that they were being taxed on the things that they manufactured in the South. It's a little bit complicated. I have a rough grasp on it, but not too firm. So I will leave those sources in the, in the links below. But just to point out, that there was a little bit more than just a question of slavery that was 
potentially behind the actual fighting of the Civil War. But that's not what Jesse Williams is talking about. He, you think that he's trying to insult you and, and your, your beloved ancestors, whoever they happen to be. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about slavery from hundreds of years ago, etc. He's saying today, Tamir Rice got shot within two seconds. And he was a 12 year old boy. Then you go make a reference to Michael Brown about people reaching yes. for the gun, which, by the way, was never proven that Michael Brown reached for the gun. But I don't want to get back matter. into it. Facts don't matter. Charlie. Yeah. Thanks, and so I don't want to relit relitigate that case. But it was inconvenient for you, the Tamir Rice case, because he was unarmed. They never gave him a chance. They killed him in two seconds flat. So that's why you switched it to a different fact pattern on a different case. Yeah, she thinks she's real smart. And by the way, let me be clear about one thing before we continue on with actual statistics and facts to counter her lack of statistics and facts in that video. Um, I don't know if she believes what she says. I think that she's a cute girl who's angling for a very specific market and she's speaking to a very specific audience and she has done very well for herself as a result of doing that. Whoa, dude. Paula from the Young Turks, check it out. The way you just described Tommy from the Blaze is exactly true of you too. You're a cute girl who's speaking directly to a specific audience who already has the same exact biases and beliefs that you do. So. That is the most asinine critique that Paula could have brought up there to, to dispute Tommy. Um, not really taking sides here, just pointing out that the level of ignorance on both sides here is mind-blowing. That she doesn't realize that the exact critique she just leveled against her opponent could be equally true of herself. Who wants to be a journalist. I also find it pretty funny here that Paula is critiquing the journalistic integrity of Tomi. There's so many instances where herself, as a representative for the Young Turks, exhibits exactly the opposite of what you consider journalistic integrity, namely by telling the viewer what to think, by giving you descriptive words, adjectives rather than facts. Goes out there, researches, and sees whether there really is some inequalities between the different communities. But here's the thing, it doesn't serve her purpose. There's no incentive for her to do that because if she actually did report the truth to the audience of The Blaze, however small that audience may be, it, it wouldn't benefit her in any way, right? She's angling for a position at Fox News and it'll be very lucrative for her. She'll fit right in. And again, I don't know if she believes what she says, all I know is her commentary was stupid. Once again, with that journalistic integrity bit, her commentary was stupid. Is that the exact quote? Her commentary was stupid. That's what Paula has to say for Tommy. It's like, all right, well, that was a pretty insightful, uh, insightful discovery there that your opponent was stupid. This is not journalism. This is name calling. Okay, it was stupid because there were no facts behind it, and. To talk about Tamir Rice as if he's some sort of crazy criminal, he was a 12-year-old boy playing with a toy gun in a park in an open carry state, okay? And a cop showed up and shot him within two seconds. And that is not hyperbole, that's fact. That was shown in the video. You have the audacity to get mad at Jesse Williams for bringing up that case? Does that 12-year-old's life not matter to you? Eventually, apparently not. Now, let me give you the statistics on racism. Before you get to the, all the definitive facts on the issue, I just want to... I like how Sank has to jump in here because his counterpart, Paulo, is just going off the deep end, and he had to rein her in because he realized that she was on an emotional rant and was basically starting to sound too extreme and losing her cool. It's like, uh, yeah, you're making us look bad here. We know we're bias to one side of the spectrum, but so is our opponent, and we're really not coming out on top here. I'll say two things. One, I'm amused that you brought up the word journalist in the same sentence as The Blaze. I know, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and, and secondly, it, the part that bothered me the most about that clip was uh, Tommy saying oftentimes uh, they're reaching for the gun, they're trying to get guns, like they had it coming. But Tamir Rice was a 12-year-old. If your 12-year-old white kid had been murdered by a black guy within two seconds, my guess is you wouldn't be like, well, what did the 12-year-old white kid do? Maybe he had it coming. That is probably not going to be your reaction. So let's keep it real on that front. But if you want to keep it real, let's give you the actual statistics and facts. All right, so look, this argument that like, oh man, like black people have all the rights that white people do and they need to stop whining and crying. And Okay, there is absolute 
evidence and data indicating that there's institutional racism and that there's racial bias that plays a huge role in our justice system. We talk about it in great detail on this show on a regular basis. But let me give you some statistics right now, okay? So if you want to start at a very young level, uh, black children make up 18% of the preschool population, but represent almost half of all out-of-school suspensions. So let's get them started early, right? And this whole notion of black people being more violent or more criminal than white people is also ridiculous, okay? Black children are 18 times more likely to be sentenced as adults than white children and make up nearly 60% of children in prisons and that's according to the APA. Let's give you some more statistics. Before we do, like the marijuana statistic that's, uh, that we've talked about in the past, the, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. It's there, they do the same acts at the same rate as white people. Yes. They simply get imprisoned, whether it's suspension or imprisonment, but t to me the most telling one is they get treated as adults at such an enormously high rate for the same crime. I'm in agreement with a lot of what the Young Turks pointed out about how there's an overrepresentation of blacks in jails, that the criminal justice system seems to punish blacks for the same crimes worse than whites. Giving that all credence and putting that all, taking that all at face value, the Young Turks don't do anything to say what they think the solution to this is, other than to sort of whether intentionally or unintentionally just blame Tomi from the blaze by suggesting that her commentary or her criticism of Jesse Williams' speech from the BET Awards that somehow she's the reason why more black people are in jail. It's like, okay, even if we take at face value that Tomy's a racist and hates black people, how is it that her being on TV hating on black people, which I disagree is even happening, how is that affecting judges and their decisions and police and their decisions? If we all agree, let's say Tomy herself, myself, we all agree that there is an institutional level of racism in the country. The Tur Young Turks are pointing this out and getting mad at their opponent for it without even having in their video any example of what sort of policy or change they think that, that could be done in the world to make this problem go away. Well, RJ, what good are you doing? You're just making fun of the Young Turks and the Blaze and pointing out how they're both doing it wrong. Aren't you doing it wrong? What are you bringing to the equation? That might be a good critique to say to me. To that, I would respond and say, what I'm doing is pointing out to anybody on the far left or anybody on the far right that if you're getting your news from The Blaze or you're getting your news from The Young Turks, you might as well be watching CNN and Fox because they're just an online version of mainstream media. They're still presenting one side of the issue and they're not being critical and unbiased sources of news. Find something in the middle. This presentation is supposed to be a more moderate, centrist, sort of independent truly independent point of view on the news where both sides get criticized and both sides get applauded for things they're doing right and wrong respectively. Yes. So if a white kid does it, oh come on, it's just a kid, he looks like my kid, that's, come on. I, that's why we have the juvenile system and not the adult system. A black kid does it, bro, oh, that's a dangerous kid. Hey, that, he's gonna do that the rest of his life, that's an adult, treat him as an adult. So now you never see that because you, you're not black. So in your experience, since you didn't experience that prejudice, they oh, there goes the Young Turks talking about racial bias again. I just want to point out that the Young Turks are coming out with a lot of interesting studies and supposed data to back up their position. But two things. First of all, Tomi from The Blaze wasn't talking about any of this stuff. She was talking about rights, and you're talking about outcomes. There's a difference between equality of rights and equality of outcomes. So that's the first main issue, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. But the second thing is, not for nothing, the Young Turks, it takes a second to mention where you're getting your data from. Just say, according to a study done by blah, 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 or according to anything, according to the New York Times, where are you pulling this information from? Other than this one Stanford um, study that they mentioned the name of their source, a lot of this data has just been thrown at us and we're supposed to accept it without knowing where it came from. 
We prove it to you, but you still want to close your eyes to it. Yeah, so let me give you some more, okay? Um, by the way, that stat, black children are 18 times more likely to be tried as adults for than the white same children. Crimes. For the same crimes. But no, 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 they have all the same rights. And, you know, Jesse Williams bringing up these issues is completely ridiculous and we need to ignore it, okay? By the way, what are you so fucking angry about? Like, why are you so angry that someone is bringing up the injustices that they're experiencing in society? What does that take away from you? Why does that make you so uncomfortable? I'm a white woman. I'm not uncomfortable with it. I know that there's inequality. I want to fix it. That doesn't make my life worse. It's not going to make my life worse off. We live in America where we're supposed to believe that everyone is created equal, right? So if there are cases of inequality, why are you so uncomfortable with someone bringing it up? Once again, the pot calls the kettle black or... The milk calls the sugar white. I don't know. But, dude, Paula, you're getting mad at your opponent for being angry when your tone in this entire presentation has been nothing but anger at your opponent. So, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm not angry. Yes, you are. You're bugging out, and your co-host has to jump in to kind of pull you off the ledge every five minutes. You're doing exactly what your opponent is doing that you're criticizing. Oh, my God. That's so, the country's majority white, so hence a lot of the people who work at the Young Turks are normally, naturally white. And not one person here has ever taken racial bias personally. It's just like so if weird. we bring up a fact, John Iderola, Anna, whoever else, Michael Schur doesn't go, oh my God, why are you bringing that up? That's not fair. Are you trying to say something about me? Because they aren't racist. So and they and by the way they're also understand hey look there is a historical context to what happens mm -hmm. and maybe we can help fix it but the people who react most ironically metaphorically violently to like how dare you uh, do you have a dog in that fight why do you care so like why does it bother you so much when people talk about generic racial bias that all of society has and then Sank comes in the mix here with his own brand of distracting us from the issue at hand Granted, we started talking about Tamir Rice and everything else, which I think everyone is in agreement that that, that was an instance of police brutality and the system gone way awry. But he went from the racial bias of the court system to claiming a racial bias that all of society has. He actually said, all of society. How did you instantiate that because something happens in court that all of society backs that? That's certainly not the case of me. So, again, this is just the case of the Young Turks, and they're only an example. This happens in underground media a lot, where they have an agenda, they have an outcome that they want you to believe, and as a result of that, they just sort of gloss you through the transition from, all right, you're thinking this, you're thinking that, here's the conclusion, see, it all seems together nicely. No, it didn't. You pointed out how some courts rule you know, corruptly against black people and then saying this is a position that all of society has and all of society is racist. Yep. It seems like you're taking it a little personally. Exactly. So let's talk about college graduates. Now these are people who got a higher education and they graduated, right? In the workplace, black college graduates are twice as likely as whites to struggle to find jobs. The jobless rate for blacks has been double that of whites for decades. A study even found that people with black sounding names had to send out 50% more job applications than people with white sounding names just to get a call back. We talked about that study, right? That's a very famous study. So if you uh, have, you know, stereotypical black names versus stereotypically white names, same exact resume, you have a 50% lower chance of even having an opportunity to get an interview if you have the black sounding name. Why are you bringing this up though, Jank? <laughs> Why are you bringing this up? Okay, don't you know about the Civil War where white people fought to, you know, end slavery? So now that's matter. not a law that you have to make sure that you don't give black people jobs. That's why we talk about the implicit bias that, that a lot of society has, even if they don't know that they have it. We're not trying to blame them, we're trying to fix the situation. That's right. If a black person kills a white person, they are twice as likely to receive the death sentence as a white person who kills a black person. Okay, So uh, local prosecutors are much more likely to upgrade a case to felony murder if you're black 
than if you are white. Okay. So, so is it their contention that uh, black people should be executed at a greater rate for the same crimes? Is that, can they really make that argument with a straight face? Like, yes, no, no, of course, that's how it should be. Don't fix that system. If, if it's a murder, either way, make sure blacks get executed at a greater rate. Who, is anyone loathsome enough to make that case? Are they willing to be honest about their own positions and come out and say, yes, we should imprison black kids more, we should execute black adults more for the same crimes as white people do? Interesting. Go ahead and make the case. Those are all statistics uh, that look at the bigger picture, right? But then there are cases of, you know, anecdotal evidence. I find it fascinating that Paula admits to the fact that what she's about to say is anecdotal, meaning it's just a story and it's sort of not scientific, but that she goes ahead to use it to, to um, sell her side of the story, to, 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 to prove her argument regardless. Yeah, this is anecdotal, but go ahead and, and base your opinions on this anyway that also drive you crazy, where you have a white Stanford University student getting caught raping an unconscious woman in the back of a dumpster, and he gets six months in jail for it, right? And then you have someone like Brian Banks, who was accused of rape when he was 16 years old. Later on, uh, the woman came forward and said, I made the whole thing up, right? But here's what happened. What, here's what prosecutors did, and here's what his defense attorneys did. They're like, oh shit, you're facing 41 years in prison, and you have an all-white jury, so you need to take a plea deal. He's like, I didn't do it. I'm not taking a plea deal. They pressured him to the point where he finally just decided to take a plea deal. He served five years in prison for a crime he did not commit. Five years in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. And by the way, he spent a year in a juvenile detention center before his case even came up. Okay, what happened to a speedy trial? Well, he's a black kid, who gives a fuck about him? So those are the cases that black individuals are talking about, right? And if you did a little bit of research and you focus a little bit on the facts instead of your talking points that appeal to the bigots that watch your show, maybe you'd know that. But again, there's no incentive for you to do that. You'd be out of a job. So, uh, by the way, for the Stanford case, they say, yeah, but he was a young kid with a promising future. He was 22. Banks was actually a young kid at the age of 16 also had a promising future, was a good student, uh, and uh, was on his way to getting a scholarship. N but he was black, how promising could his future really be? Let's try him as an adult and give him a lot more time. So uh, so it goes on and on, and then lastly, the, the one stat we also give, and by the way, this is endless, we can give you the eBay, if you said black hand, people uh, won't buy the product, Stop they'll pay, frisk, that's they'll, another example. they'll pay less for it in New York City, over 90% of the time, it's minorities that are stopped and frisked, and then when they get arrested at a higher rate, you go, well, they had it coming. No, but you only stop black people and, and, and Latinos. You never stopped the white people. You never got a chance to find out if they had drugs on them. And then finally, the marijuana one. Blacks and whites do marijuana at the same rate. Blacks are arrested at four times the rate. So it doesn't have to be codified in law. It is oftentimes the racism that is practiced. And that is, by the way, empirical, proved out by the data. And that is the bias that this society has that we try to point out. And because we're decent human beings, we try to fight against and fix. Whereas you think that is fantastic and should be defended. That's part of what makes you not a terrific human being. All right, guys, I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Um, so the gist of where I was going with this is basically I was in a... Facebook kind of thread slash debate sort of thing happening where I got in on the side of Tommy from the blaze just pointing out that there is a perception about race that it only happens against black people um, and it is only done by white people and as a white guy I wanted to step in and just say on that one part of what Tommy was saying which wasn't even shown in this clip um, I do agree, and Jesse Williams even sort of played into that by saying, if you don't have something positive to say about helping blacks achieve equal rights, then don't even say anything. We don't want to hear from you. And as a messenger, as a role model in the black community, for him to put that message out there and to basically create, like I said, more of an echo chamber, I think that's really irresponsible and it's pretty terrible. We're never going to defeat racism as a culture, as a society, as a human race until we realize that it can happen between any two groups. It can even happen within a group. White people can have white guilt. 
black people can be racist against themselves. I don't know if you see this a lot, but I've seen it myself in both of those uh, ways. And I think if you guys search and think, you could probably realize where these things are occurring. Um, and other races can be racist as well. You know, it doesn't matter which ones I come up with, Chinese, Indian, Latin American, Canadian, it doesn't matter. Not that Canadian is a race, but whatever, French Canadian, I don't know, that might be a race. Point being is, we have to understand that there are some forces, um, or at least this is my belief, there are some forces in the world that like division, that like to put us apart and like to have us battling each other. So just because I defend white people, hopefully you saw in this video that I also defended a lot of the causes that affect black people, namely the quality of outcomes, um, how, how they're affected in judicial matters, how they're affected by police officers, institutional racism. I'm not denying the reality of a lot of these things, if not all of these things. Um, it is a matter of degrees. And not, not everything is black and white in this world. And I don't mean that about skin color. I mean that about issues being 100% one way or 100% another way, and there's no in-between. There is an in-between. And the thing I wanted to hone in on this video, and I think the people that are expecting this video, that have been looking forward to it because I told them I was doing it, might be a little disappointed that I'm not weighing in on who's right and who's wrong, basically saying everybody's wrong. <laughs> and I'm right. No, I'm not right either. Um, I'm trying to do the best I can to do the thing I'm advocating for. I'm trying to come in more neutral and say something that I think is as fair as it can be and as productive as it can be for future conversation that we can have regardless of our skin color, regardless of our race. If black people feel like they can't say anything to credit something a white person says or else other black people are going to alienate them or make them feel like they're not really black or not part, not like whatever, self-hating or whatever. And the same for white people. If white people can't stand up for themselves because they say, oh, well, you know, black people have had it so bad over the years that, well, you know, I'm a white man, so I can't say that I'm stereotyped against or biased against or hated against in any ways it's just not true white men get treated like garbage by a lot of people and people go oh that's a bunch of crap well guess what if you're not a white man you, you really don't know just like if i'm not a black guy i really don't know what i'm talking about other than the best i can do so i'm just saying if you if you if you don't believe what you hear look everybody's got a BS detector. If it smells really bad, then run away. But if you think someone's got a good heart and you think that they're trying to help and you see that they're not just trying to take some terrible event like the Tamir Rice situation and rile up people and try to build their own platform and make their own ego and their own um, fame a little bit bigger. And I'm not accusing Jesse Williams of this necessarily. I'm just pointing out that it kind of smells like that to me a little bit. I'm all for... Not just equal rights, but a quality of outcomes as far as they can be attained. I don't think we should be for forcing society. And that's the next bit that this is going to lead into in the future content that I'm going to do. Is I don't think there's a safe way to force equal outcomes. You know, if you have a thousand people applying for a job, and let's just say for some reason 500 of them are white and 500 of them are black. And let's say that those 500 on average have the same education, the same background, the same experience, but... The white people get 60% of the jobs. Is that fair? No. But is there an easy way to fix that? Not that I'm aware of. I just don't know what the solution is. So I'm willing to put it out there. That's why I'm making this video. Um, you can't really pass a law saying that you have to hire 50% of your staff black and 50% white because you may not always get the same skill or the same ability in your applicants you might get 10 white guys applying and only two black people so you can't go out and find you know if you need five people you can't go out or if you need 10 people you can't go out and find three more black people because only two of them applied um so anyway guys i can't go on and on forever this video is already way too long for a youtube video but i did the best i could to keep the the meat and the potatoes in the analysis part where I was chopping up the um, the Young Turks video and this kind of 
breakdown at the end is for people who really dug what I was trying to say and saw where I was going with it, or at least even if you hated what I was saying, you stuck around to see if I could redeem myself. This is me trying to kind of pull it all together. Um, I don't know why exactly I'm getting sucked into this question of race. I don't think of myself as a racist or as a white nationalist or anything crazy like that. I don't hate different groups of people and I don't feel white pride or anything like I'm white and I'm the best I think everybody has something special to offer not just based on their race or their ethnicity but by their individual nature of who they are their background their experiences their their brains their DNA so diversity is a good thing insofar as we are allowed to be ourselves if diversity means you're only good if you're a liberal and a progressive and a, and a social justice warrior and you are only good if you want what those groups want, that's not diversity. Diversity is all different voices allowed to speak, all different backgrounds and cultures and identities allowed to be who they want to be, including straight, heterosexual, white males. might be boring. It may not be the flavor of the month, but that still should be allowed in society and as someone who identifies with all those groups, I'd like to have a voice, even if people think I'm privileged or whatever, I'm still born into the flesh that I'm born into, just like you are, if you're a female or black or gay or whatever, trans, we're all born into the body we're born into, so if I can't hate you for who you are, I want to see how you can hate me for who I am, and that's kind of where I'm going to leave it off today, I will be talking about race more I will be talking about these issues from a perspective of rights versus outcomes. That's a big, whole big iceberg that I've only touched the the, the very tippy top of. Rights is on the beginning of the process. What you're allowed to do, and this is a legal thing, like the government gives you rights or God-given rights. Let's just say human rights, God rights. Um, But... The outcomes are the outcomes. There's a whole lot of things that happen between your rights and your outcomes. And I have a whole thing in store for you guys on that. Um, As always, likes, comments, and shares. And uh, yeah, just subscribe and uh, leave me your thoughts. Peace. Seriously, peace.